Just like with the Pagani, the first half of the build is the back section of the car. And I was quite enjoying myself until I started to apply the stickers. Hi, welcome to Sven's Bricks. I'm continuing today with my Speed Champions reviews of the new sets released for 2023. And this time around, we're looking at the Ferrari 812 Competizione. Now I, like many it seems, was a little bit underwhelmed when they announced yet another Ferrari for the Speed Champions line. And not only that, but not an iconic one like so many fans are asking for. Where's the F50 or the Testarossa? I've heard Chris Stamp, the lead designer of the Speed Champions say that they kind of have to concentrate a bit on the newer models because the car brands really want to push their latest vehicles. But then the only thing I don't get about this is that I hardly think that Ferrari are gonna to struggle to sell these cars. And in fact, aren't Ferrari known for actually inviting people to buy their cars because they have such high demand? I certainly know that some models just can't be bought by anybody. You actually have to be invited. But I suppose it's important for Ferrari to stay relevant by pushing their new cars in the hope that they will become icons one day too. Now the Competizione is actually a trimmed version of the 812 Superfast and for me it's a bit of a curious choice that LEGO decided to go with the Competizione over the Superfast but I'll go into that more later. But let's move on to the model and the build itself. Despite having underwhelming feelings about the set, I do think it looks really good and I think this set is probably going to be the one that appeals most to kids, being bright red, being a Ferrari, and it has the really sleek looks of a sports car. It's also, I'm pretty sure, the most studless speed champion so far, but for you stud enthusiasts there are a couple on the side, and we're even treated to a couple on the back. This is of course achieved thanks to the new wheel arches that allow us to place tiles in line with the top of the arch, and I must say that even if I don't have a big problem with studs, it really, really helps the look of the bonnet on this car. It was a nicely paced build and possibly the least challenging of the ones that I've built so far. And just like with the Solus GT and one or two of the other cars, we are given some nice parts inside that weren't entirely necessary. So for example, we get these relatively new two plate high bricks where they could easily have used plates. And considering that this set actually has one by two plates, this has to be a deliberate choice by the designer to give us some more interesting parts. We're also given rounded plates under the dashboard where normal ones would have worked just as well. The build for the rear end of the car is really cool with a bit of studs on the side building for the rear headlights. These are printed parts, but I was a little bit disappointed that mine weren't very central. And if you look at those too long, they kind of start to appear a bit cross-eyed. The use of stud shooters for the exhaust is absolutely genius, and I highly applaud whoever came up with that. Just like with the Pagani, the first half of the build is the back section of the car, and I was quite enjoying myself until I started to apply the stickers. Now I knew there were a lot of stickers, but I was not prepared for what is possibly the smallest sticker that I've ever had to apply on a Lego set so far. And this one was really, really fiddly to get right. And this is unfortunately where my big problem with the set comes in. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind stickers that much, but there are definitely a few issues here. Firstly, at the front, you're sort of forced to have some red in between the yellow lines somewhere, either at the top where the red section of the bonnet meets the black, or in between, so you're not able to create a consistent yellow line going right through the bonnet. Yes, they're now providing us with printed headlights, which is great, but where the real problem comes in is that you're kind of forced to put the stickers on because of the yellow printing on the roof. So if you really detest stickers, then this is unfortunately a set that I would avoid. Thanks to the triangle tiles on the bonnet, we're not completely reliant on stickers. And for these ones here, I would recommend pushing them up and to the side as much as possible to try and eliminate any black lines showing through. But speaking of showing through, I think it's a bit of a curious design choice to use yellow plates under the black tiling here. It's a minor issue, but you can see this a bit through the bonnet and also through onto the dashboard, but perhaps they were trying to pick up some of the yellow accents on the real dashboard. Again, it's great to see printing on the side of the windshield piece and the color match isn't too far off there either. Finally, looking at the minifigure, I think he's pretty good looking, although it's a bit of a shame to not get any printing on the legs whatsoever. However, I do quite like his leather Ferrari jacket, which they've done a good job with printing the back as well. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, for me, it's a bit of a curious choice that LEGO didn't go with the super fast. They've acknowledged that they've listened to our feedback about stickers and given us printed headlights. But then why go and choose a car that's so reliant on stickers in order to complete the look? However, even though the set is never going to be one of my favourites, it's definitely nice enough for it to sit on my shelf, and I think they'll sell a lot of units. The designers have really done a great job with the accuracy on this. I just hope that the next Ferrari they release will be a really iconic one. So let me know what you think in the comments. Drop me a like if you've enjoyed the video as it helps the channel to grow. 
Also, if you feel like it, check out my channel where I have conversions and modifications of the old Speed Champion sets. One of my latest ones, for example, is the LaFerrari. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.